Well, hey everyone, how are you doing? It's March 7th, 10 days away from Selection Sunday for the March Madness College Basketball Tournament. If you've been following any of the videos that I've uh, that I've done recently, I've, I've been battling gambling addiction, and I'm proud to say that I have been good uh, recently. I haven't done any wagering, staying away from sports betting, focusing on other things, and um, I'm going to continue to do that and not wager. So I do not condone gambling, uh, even though this video is sort of about, you know, preparing a, a tournament and tournament bracket. So I won't be participating when it comes to wagering, but I can certainly assist you if you're running an office pool uh, because the March Madness tournament, this is something where a lot of people tend to get involved with this that are not college basketball fans. It's, um, I mean, it's an event that involves uh, a lot of people leaving work on Thursday morning at like 10 a.m. to go drink beers and watch college basketball games every 15 minutes. Uh, so it can be a lot of fun. And it's one of the first products that I ever created uh, on KenBraverman.com and that I started doing YouTube videos about. So uh, obviously I need to keep continuing to do this um, to help everybody that wants to run a tournament. So we'll quickly go through all the files that you can get. I'm charging only $25 for everything that you see in this video. Um, it's going to have uh, a master scoring bracket to help score your office pool. It's going to have an entry bracket in Microsoft Excel and in Google Sheets. This is actually completely free. The Google Sheet um, file is, is free for everybody to fill out because it's just an entry bracket. So if you need something simply to enter in, this, this will be helpful for you. You don't even have to pay for that. But you'll have to pay for the master scoring bracket, and you'll see why because you can see what it does. So on Sunday, they're going to announce all of the teams that qualify for the 64-team uh, the field for March Madness, as well as there will be play-in games. So it's really 68 teams that are going to be announced. And I'll do the coding on Sunday night, the 17th, to get all the teams in the proper spot for the bracket to make sure that it all aligns properly. So it really won't be ready until Sunday night because you can't prepare it until they announce the teams. But once once you do um, have that, you know, completely listed and the selections are over, uh, what you have is you have a few different ways to fill this out. And it does take a little while. Um, this is what the Excel version looks like. Uh, and you just have to, you know, click on on the box and choose the team. You know, this is not what the setup is going to be, obviously, because they haven't announced selections yet. You know, who would win between Maryland and West Virginia? Maryland would probably win this year. San Diego State would probably win this year. I don't know. Virginia at Furman, I don't even know who'd win that game. You start filling this out, and once it's filled out completely, you, you end up with this list at the bottom that organizes all of the picks in this rectangle right here. So you end up getting an entry and all the different picks in order. Type the entry name up here at the top. Ooh, making sounds. Um, so you type your entry name here, you know, entry number one or whoever's name it is. You can see it. We're, we're moving really slow because we have a lot of processing going on with a lot of files up in here. So type the entry name, you fill it out. And I'm going to show you what the AI entry bracket looks like from last year because it's already filled in. This is one that will automatically fill it for you based on the rankings that the algorithm predicts for you. Um, basically, Last year, it would have had, looks like it would have had Houston winning. They did not win last year, but uh, it would have had them winning. And it rates all the different teams. And it's a whole separate video about the college basketball algorithm and how it rates teams. But it gives you this list here. And you can easily highlight this list to prepare it for putting it in the master scoring bracket. So as soon as you know everyone, everyone has filled out what they need to fill out, you go up here to a, a picks, AI picks range, and it copies this area. You just copy it, and then you go over to the master scoring bracket, which is a separate file, and you go into the all data sheet and you paste it as values one two three. Paste as values one two three, and it's going to paste all the picks that that entrant made. And once it does that, uh, and you can also um, choose the number of points that you think the final game will have. That's what we use as the tiebreaker. Um, so say there's gonna be 150 points or something. 
Um, you'd fill out how many points they think it is. That's helpful if there is a tiebreaker. There's usually not, not need for a tiebreaker in this tournament, but if you have a lot of entrants, you might have that. So once you do that, it's real easy to score everyone's brackets. Um, basically within the master bracket, you have a certain number of points that you can assign to each round. The way it's set up right now is if you get a correct pick in round one, it's going to award one point. If you get a correct pick in round two, it's going to award two points. I have this uh, under the Fibonacci sequence, I believe, one, two, three, five, where you're just adding the two numbers above to get the next number. Two plus three is five. Five plus three is eight. Eight plus three is 13. That's how I have the score, but you can score it any way you want. And you change these points and it's going to award scoring however you choose to award scoring per round. Once that's done, it's very easy. All you have to do is, is say, all right, well, who won this game in reality between Alabama and Texas A&M Corpus Christi? Let's say Alabama won. I think, I think actually, yeah, there was a crazy upset last year. Wasn't there? Didn't a 16 beat a one last year? I can't remember, but I know it's happened in the last few years. You just fill it in. And once you fill it in, there's another standings pivot table that's automatically going to refresh over here. And as soon as you refresh this, you're going to see how many points each entry has. In this case, the test one entry has gotten awarded one point so far, meaning they got one of those two games correct. And they have a potential of 135 points remaining in the tournament because all the rest of the games we haven't filled in yet. So this standing sheet is what saves you a tremendous amount of time if you are scoring a, a, a tournament with any significant number of interest. I, I would say even f like if you have more than five people in your uh, in your March Madness tournament, you're going to want to use something like this because going through each game and assigning points to each entrance bracket is a frustrating and laborious process. And so this is built to just make it as easy as possible. Once people will get their entries in, you simply paste them in the all data sheet and then you fill in who actually wins the games, and then you refresh the standing sheet, and you're going to get the order of who's winning, who's got potential points remaining. You can run simulations of the rest of the games to figure out who would win if certain teams win. It's really a fun simulation mechanism here so that you can just spend as little time as possible scoring and update everyone who's in your tournament how they're doing, who's winning. It's great for that. And it's only 25 bucks. So that is what we have. So we've got the master scoring bracket. You'll get the AI entry bracket, which will tell you what the algorithm thinks should happen in the games. It's never perfect. No one's ever been perfect. There are a quintillion number of possibilities when it comes to putting these teams in different order. Nobody in the history of doing this has ever managed to create and successfully have a perfect bracket. We'll cross our fingers and we hope we can do it this year, but um, the odds are against us. So you get the AI entry bracket, you get the regular entry bracket if you want to send this out to your users in Excel, and you can also just point them to the uh, the other bracket, the Google Sheet bracket, if they don't have Microsoft Excel, and you want to have them fill out this version as well, it works exactly the same way. And it also color codes itself nicely because it shows you um, you know, where you need to pick teams. And if you end up changing something in the past, it's going to, I believe it's going to show an error. Yeah. Shows up in pink if it wasn't a team that you were able to choose. So the, the Google Sheet version is a little bit better when it comes to some quality assurance to make sure that your entrants have filled out their bracket properly. Is if anything shows up in pink, it means it was incorrectly chosen. You know, you needed to choose Texas A&M in this situation because those were the only teams that were available. Here, you can choose Alabama because they were available. So that is what will be ready on March 17th. I'm going to continue to not wager on sports and feel better about my life. Um, <laughs> you have to, you have to, you have to beat your addictions if you want to succeed in life. And gambling addiction has been just a huge struggle for me over the last, I mean, many, many years, but especially the last few years as sports betting has become uh, just so available on the phones and wherever you are at any time. And it's been legalized across so many states that uh, it became a vice that I just couldn't stay away from. And it was ruining my life. And I'm glad that I seem to be beating it. And I hope to continue to do so. So 
if you're running a March Madness bracket, you've got the options here and I'm keeping it as, as low as price as I can here at 25 bucks and I'll get all this stuff ready and get you on the email list and send this out to you. Uh, several years ago, I remember running, I ran a bunch of different possible uh, AI entry brackets and, and also had people entering a tournament that I ran a few years ago and using, uh, using the different standings percentages that were available here, it managed like just using the percentages and, and using the algorithm, it beat almost every person. And they did very, very well. There was a, a lot of these distributions that were way at the top of the results list, but one person managed to beat all the AI algorithms. And I have to go back and dig out those videos because I did do videos about it. I actually paid that person because I said, if anybody can beat the AI algorithm, I will I will pay you. Uh, half of all the money that I that I uh, received selling these algorithms, and I did, I did, I did pay whoever won that. Um, so this thing can be very helpful when it comes to predicting the games as well. But generally, just enjoy, enjoy watching college basketball, enjoy this uh, unique tournament structure that really only exists in college men's college basketball and women's. There's nothing stopping me from creating a women's bracket as well. We have all the, you know, the template for it, essentially. And I, I probably will do that as they do announce the women's tournament uh, selections as well later on Sunday night, the 17th. So I'll probably do that as well because I, I do have a way that, that we could do that and it could also simulate women as well. So I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet, but it's a possibility. And certainly if anyone's interested in that, let me know because uh, that will motivate me to do that. All right. Well, here we go. March Madness is coming 10 days away. Enjoy basketball. You won't see too many sports betting videos out of me anymore. I'm not, not doing them. I'm not betting, but I will do the tournament here because you have to. All right. Good luck. May all your picks be winning. May your March Madness tournament be enjoyable. See you later.